Hi, this is Roger in Finland and today we're gonna be color grading in DaVinci Resolve footage from the Sony ZV-1 in S-Log2, S-Log3 and HLG. So for the impression ones I'll be using DaVinci Resolve 17.2, DaVinci YRGB color managed and then what I'm gonna be doing is basically setting the input color space for each of the clips to the correct um, picture profile that I shot uh, the clip and it might be that it's actually detecting it automatically, so S-Log2, s gamut S-Log3, s gamut 3 or HLG uh, Rec2020 or Rec2100. Then I'm gonna be going from there to Arilog C, I'm gonna do all my grading, then go from Arilog C to the output, and I'm done. But before getting into some more details, meaning jumping into the Vinci Resolve to do the actual grading, let me tell that the Sony ZV-1 is an awesome little video camera that also takes pictures. And I think it's amazing that Sony is packing in such a small package with this price picture profiles that give flexibility like S-Log2, S-Log3 and HLG. And yes, these picture profiles are usable even if your camera is 8-bit, like the ZV-1. Sure, 10-bit are better than 8 and 12 are better than 10, but none of this means that these picture profiles are unusable in 8-bit. I have a video on the A6400 talking about the same things, but this will apply also to the Sony ZV-1. And just to demonstrate and make the point, let me show you this. Or let's do it in a different way. But what we're going to be grading is basically this shot exactly, shot in S-Log2, shot in S-Log3, shot in HLG. Then we're gonna have this control environment with the proper lighting and uh, x ray color chart with the colors in here. So we're gonna be checking color accuracy. And then I'm gonna be having also some uh, vlogging shots, meaning me outside hand-holding the camera in S-Log2, S-Log3 and HLG. Once we've done the process once, I'm gonna, you're gonna see that the process is very, very similar for all the different profiles, but we're gonna take a look at uh, if there are any differences. I'm sure that I'm not going to be able to get exactly the same output result for each one of them, but what I'm sure is going to be happier with the results with all of them separately. So let's hop into DaVinci Resolve. So now we're in DaVinci Resolve 17.2 and let me show you my settings. So here we're working with DaVinci YRGB Color Manager and SDR Rec 709. And here I have my timeline for S-Log2, where I have my YouTube talking head, vlogging talking head in the sun, the same in the shade, and here the same clips with a difference. So these four clips here that have the um, orange mark, I have the input color space bypassed. And in the ones in the beginning, I do have the input color space correctly set as S-Log2 and s gamut. And now what I will do with this um, clip that has the input color space correctly set and as you can see it's somewhat overexposed which is what you should do with um, S-Log2 anyway. So we're going to drop in the first note the color space transform where we're going to be going from the timeline because it's color managed to Ari Alexa and Ari Loxy. Then I'll have two notes, one for exposure correction, one for color correction and then in the very last note we're going to go to or from Ari Alexa to an Ari Loxy to the timeline itself. Now you can see that I disabled the whole trade, nothing actually changes. So let me show you why doing the Ari Loxy uh, thing. So here I'm going to do the exposure correction and because we're working in Ari Loxy, it's going to be as easy as adjusting the offset. What I want to do is to get my skin tones, my face, which is this thing here in the waveform, somewhere down there. And, and to do that, I'll just adjust the offset and somewhere there and this looks yeah this looks good enough let's take a look at full screen this is the um, exposure um, corrected image i can disable that now and this is how it looks and it looks good and everything is fine but now let me reset this note let me disable the color space transforms and now i'll do exactly the same thing with this same looking image and we'll see that this behaves very differently if now I touch the offset, everything moves as a block there. And even if now I got this part of the way from what I wanted it before, this doesn't look nearly as good as it was looking before. So let's undo this. Let's turn on the RE lock color space transforms and let's do this quickly. As said, imagine that you just added those RE lock C 
um, transform. So all what you have to do here is this. And that's it. Now happy. Take a look. It looks great. Then um, colors. I just want to maybe boost a little bit the color. So I'm going to put the saturation maybe at 60. Let's have the color boost at 5. And there we are. This is the image with the color a bit boosted. And this is without. And that's it. Now we have a properly um, color corrected image. You can go further and do a color grading to be more dramatic if you want. But this is it. And let me show you why this actually worked. So I'm going to add another note here. Um, let's add a circle mask on my face. I just want to show you that the colors, the skin tone are where they are supposed to be. So let's get the vector scope. And you can see that this line is where the skin tones are supposed to be. And this is where my skin is. So this is properly set. Now what I'll do is show you a quick thing. So this clip is basically shot exactly in the same time with exactly the same lighting than the previous one. So what I'm going to do is just copy the create from one clip prior and everything should be fine in here. As you can see, the colors are pretty accurate. The exposure is where it's supposed to be. And the skin tones, which is this row here in the middle, are lying just a little bit on the other side of this skin tone line. This is also to show you that my skin and the skin tone from the color checker are a little bit different. But with those two very small corrections in SLOG2, we got really good colors. And that's it. And now let's make a test. Can we do it quickly for an outdoor shot? There we go. This is our SLOG shot. Let's see how the waveform looks. It is a bit overexposed, as it's supposed to be. Color space transform from um, timeline to Avi Alexa and Avi Loxy. Then we're going to have just one note to correct those two things. So the offset and a little bit the saturation. <clears throat> and go out with another color space transform from Avi Alexa and Avi Loxy. And now let's adjust this. Now this changed because I still have this turn on, but there we go. Let's see how it works. Um, let's get this down. I'm getting my skin, which is here, somewhere there. And that's good enough. Let's bump up a bit the saturation. A bit the color boost. Uh, not so much. <laughs> and there we are. See, this is the final shot from the SLOG2 exposed image. So, yes, you can get easily, very, very easily, good colors and accurate colors in SLOG2 in 8-bit with Sony ZV-1. There you go. Now we can do the same thing, but in here, and this is when we had the color space bypassed. So as you can see, this will be even more difficult to try to work with because it's not color managed. So the difference between the previous clips and this one would be that in the color space transform, we would have to tell Resolve to go from Sony as gamut and Sony as log 2 to Ari Alexa and Ari Luxy. The next steps are actually the same than before. So this is going from Ari Alexa and Ari Luxy to the timeline itself. And here's where we do our adjustments. And there we go. There we go. There we go. Oops. Again, not so much. Maybe like that. And there we have it. If you are bypassing the input color space or you still use DaVinci version 16, which I'm not sure if it has the same um, DaVinci YRGB color managed, it's basically just setting this first node going from Sony as Gamut and as Log2 to Arial X and Arial Oxy, instead of doing it like we did before, which was this one. You see that the results are a little bit different. I was doing things in a hurry. Um, now this looks more contrasty, so we would maybe reduce a bit the contrast. Now it looks closer to the other one. So you can make a, a lot of adjustments and try to get these two things close to each other, but that was not the point of the tutorial. The point of this tutorial was to show how easy it actually is. 
Now let's see, can we quickly also work in S log 3? That's even more scary because it's supposed to be even more difficult. Again, this is color managed S log 3. This is not. So let's go here. Color space transform from timeline to RLX, RLX C. Now this starts to get really repetitive because it's exactly the same process. So basically I'm going from whatever I'm working with to RLX and RLX C where the controls of DaVinci Resolve just magically become very easy to use and responsive. And there we go, a bit of saturation. And as usually, let's just add the five here because I was doing it wrong. And full screen, no grade with a quick grade. And it looks good with S log three. In general, I prefer the look of S log 2 to S log 3 with um, Sony 8 bit cameras, and I haven't had the chance to test the uh, 10 bit ones. But if you want the extra dynamic range that S log 3 uh, gives and you're okay with the colors you get, now you can see that it's actually usable and easy to use. Once again, these orange uh, bits here, the difference is that you would have to then set manually that first node going from S gamma 3 and then S log 3 since this was shot in PP9 in the ZV1, which the default values are this S gamma 3 and S gamma 3 and S log 3. But there you go, you would have then the, the same um, steps done, done before. Then let's take a quick look at HLG. So here in HLG, DaVinci Resolve detected automatically that this input color space is HLG and REC 2100. Um, I think actually that in the camera settings it says 2020, but here we don't have 2020 HLG, so maybe this will be the closest, but we're going to go with like whatever it was selected. And once again, what I'll do is to go from whatever I'm working with, and this is color manager, so I don't need to care, to RLX and RLX C, do my corrections, and then get out from there. And now remember that we're trying to do a fast grade to see whether we can get okay looks with the minimum amount of effort. And now the exposure is where I want it, but this for my test is too saturated. So now what we'll do here is actually get take this down a notch and take this down a notch. And I prefer how this looks. But this is how easy it was again to work with HLG. <laughs> um, of course, all the grades is a matter of taste. This image is properly white balanced. And uh, by the way, that was done with the automatic white balance of the ZV1, which is a nice surprise. But now you've seen how easy it is to work with SLOG2, SLOG3, and HLG in DaVinci Resolve with footage from the ZV1, which is 8-bit. Very easy to create. And here now that's the point. What I just showed is how to do very, very easily the minimum exposure and saturation and color adjustments to have a properly color corrected image. And then you can add on top of this whatever grade you would like to, if you want to be a bit more uh, dramatic. So let's try a little bit of drama in this s -log image. Maybe I can add a bit of, I don't know, blue in the shadows a bit and a bit of orange in the mid-tones, and let's not call it till an orange, but, well, let me show you how this looks. So this is this a little bit created image. This was the normal color correctors. But anyway, now we're in the territory of, please have fun, please color grade. Yes, it's possible and more than usable to use s 2 with these cameras. But that's it for today in DaVinci Resolve, so let's get back to the talking head. All right, I don't know how many of you ZV1 users were already familiar with these methods or with the capabilities of the camera on why and how to use s 2 s 3 or HLG. I have to say that my favorites are HLG and s 2 and it depends on a little bit the mood I am and maybe the scene. Why I have been focusing in these three only and none of the others? That's because the, these three allow me to use uh, color management in DaVinci Resolve and then do the work in our Reloxy. The rest of the profiles are already baked in with some things that they don't allow me to use the same method, which that's the one that I enjoy, but that's pretty much it. If I would not be using any of these three picture profiles, then what I would use is just PP1 as it comes from the factory because it's fantastic. 
So I hope you learned something today in this video. If you did like it, please like and subscribe. And we're gonna see you soon for some more content.